something different today. I'm gonna follow that time-honored YouTube tradition of recording videos on the move. Today, we're gonna talk about 10 things that will immediately make you better as a jazz bassist. So thanks for being here. Also, before we begin, I need to give you this caveat, which is basically I'm giving suggestions and not rules. I've been teaching for a long time. I teach at a couple of different universities as well as an art school. So hopefully these can work for you. These are concerns that I see come up with a lot of different students at various times. So let's get started. Number one, listen harder. This one's pretty self-explanatory. We tend to get in our own worlds when we play, especially as bassists. I mean, coming up with a line to match the chord on certain beats, to give it flow, that's not easy stuff, and we have to think about it a lot. But the key to making good music is to pay more attention to the musicians around you than to what you, yourself, are playing. Listen harder. Even if it's only one other instrument, or sometimes maybe one hand that the piano plays, or one part of the drum set, let's say the hi-hat or the ride cymbal, focus in on one thing and then broaden your listening from there. We can always listen more closely and harder to what's going on on the bandstand. Number two, don't play so hard. This is something I've tried to deal with for years and that I see happening a lot. I grew up also in the, the early 90s playing jazz. A lot of people were playing without amps and just using microphones. So we got in the habit of digging in and playing really hard. Uh, this is something I often tell to people. The bass is a big wooden box, and sometimes we try to force the information out of that box. But really, you have to finesse it. There's a certain amount of pressure that you have to put on the string, but there's also a certain amount of looseness you have to play with to get the biggest sound before you get diminishing returns. So, in this case, don't play so hard. Don't pluck the string so hard. Also, how about that view? Nice. Number three, breathe. We have a tendency to tighten up and hold our breath when we get nervous. We breathe in little teeny little spurts. You have to take deep, full breaths in between your phrases. Make it flow like the way that you're breathing. Breathe along with the music and breathe to feed your ideas. Number four, don't walk. Yeah, I know this one's kind of funny. We spend most of our time as jazz bass players playing walking bass lines, but there are times that we can change up and totally change the narrative of the music happening. How do we do that? The most obvious one is to play in two. That totally changes the complexion from soloist to soloist or head to soloist. Another one is to play a pedal point. You can play one note over a given set of chords. The most obvious is say we're playing rhythm changes, B flat, maybe you pedal on an F for the A sections. That changes the complexion of the music. And there's always the option to not play at all, which totally changes the vibe. And this is a favorite of many tenor saxophonists who listen to John Coltrane and at times will request that they want the bass to drop out while they play with just the drums. So you have many options other than walking. Maybe try to explore those options once in a while and see how much it changes the music. Number five, stop embellishing so much. I know, I know, we all know how to play ghost notes. Those pull-offs sound really, really great. Those skips, we know how to put triplets into our playing. Man, it's really cool, but it takes away from the groove at times. Focus on the utter power of playing quarter notes and the swing of quarter notes, so that when you do decide to add an anticipation or a skip or a hiccup in the beat, as we say, a triplet, it will really stand out and matter. Focus on the quarter notes. Don't play so much. Number six, use your dynamics and your range. When you play low on the bass, it has a certain effect on the sound. When you go up and you play high on the bass, let's say the G octave above the open G string, uh, or into thumb position, that also has an extreme effect on the music. It changes the texture. Experiment with these ranges and how different they make a line sound, how heavy they make a line sound, and how light they make a line sound in the end. Use 
use your range and use dynamics, louds and softs, to shape the music. Much in the same way a drummer would. You can make the music sound different ways just by how loud and soft or by how low or high you play on the bandstand. Number seven, simplify. This is a really important one. Some of the greatest bass players of our time have the most unbelievable technique you've ever heard. The first one that comes to mind is Jaco Pastorius. He was amazing. He played the bass in a way nobody ever dreamed. It was extremely busy. It was full of notes. But that's not always the way that's gonna serve the music. We're not all Jocko. You have to find the sound that's inside of you. Sometimes less is more. Let me tell you a story. When I was in college, I was about 18 years old and we were fortunate enough to have a clinic with the great flautist Herbie Mann. He came in to play with his group for us. In case you didn't know, Herbie Mann was a lover of Brazilian jazz music, at one point using all Brazilian musicians in his band. He did a clinic for my college class with the great Sergio Brandao on bass. And at one point we were all asked to sit in and play for this clinic. When I got up to play, your typical bossa nova, I thought I would play what a bossa nova was supposed to sound like, maybe like the way Stanley Clark would play it. Sergio immediately got up out of his chair and came over to me and whispered in my ear, no, no man, walk, walk. And then he showed me by just playing half notes. He played half notes on a bossa nova, but it made the music feel incredible. Simplification often is the best solution. Simplify what you're doing and serve the music. Make the groove happen. Number eight, look at something. Open your eyes visually. Lock in your focus somewhere. This is something I've dealt with for the last several years and continue to deal with. Our point of emphasis needs to be outward and not inward. Say, when we get nervous and we close our eyes when we play. That would be me. I do that a lot. We should focus our attention outward. Let me tell you another story. I got to play with the great Christian McBride. Long story, we played a couple hours together. He was really great. I asked him if he had any advice for me, and he said one thing. He said, I would tell you to open your eyes. I was terrified playing with him, and my eyes were shut most of the time. When you open your eyes, you invite in possibilities. Beyond that, I feel I play better when I can lock onto something visually. Whether it's something in the back of the house, or even sometimes a person in the audience. But you have to put your visual focus somewhere so that it can disappear and you can kind of be absorbed into the music. Opening my eyes and breathing when I'm improvising, it somehow seems to make my sight disappear where I'm not even thinking about how my eyes work or what I'm looking at. I'm 100% in the music. So this one might be controversial, but I would highly recommend that you open your eyes, you look at something, you focus and calm your mind down so that you can just be in the moment 100%. Number nine, this is a controversial one. Put away the changes, especially the iReelB and your cell phones on the bandstand. It's great and all for you to be reading changes to a tune that you don't know, but I almost guarantee that once you read it, you're gonna have to read it again and again and again. It's not the best way to learn a tune. You need to learn how to use your ears. When you try to play a tune without changes, it might be bad for two or three choruses. That being said, you're probably gonna know that tune for the rest of your life. As a jazz musician, you need to start to develop a repertoire, very much in the same way that a classical musician knows what's required on their instrument. There's a set of tunes we should all know as jazz musicians. And if you don't know them, you need to learn them. And the first step to really learning a tune is to put away the changes. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna divinely just start playing the tune right within two choruses, but it's gonna help you know what you need to know and need to learn, and it's gonna make you listen harder. Remember that first thing? Put away the changes. If there's a tune you don't know and you really struggle on, write it down, go home and work on it. The iReel B is a great tool, but it's a distraction, just like real books. Fake books are distractions. You need to be in the group, not on a sheet, not in your phone. You need to be interacting. And you can only do that if you really know a tune. Learn the tune, learn the melody and the changes. Then you can really let go and play. Number 10, 
Be fluid, be flexible, like water. I think there's a Bruce Lee quote where he actually talks about that. Be formless, shapeless, like water. The musician that works the most isn't the person who's the most forceful or the strongest on the gig. It's the musician that can lock in with anybody. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm coming to you from Pittsburgh. A wonderful city full of amazing drummers. And really, none of them play the same. They all play very different, they're all amazing. And I have to lock in with all of them. And what that requires is being flexible. If someone plays a little ahead, I have to go with that. If someone plays a little behind, I go with that. I think what makes you work is your ability to make the music feel good and not to be the person that insists on where the time has to be every time. So the point of it is to be flexible. Be flexible in how you play. Some people are gonna rush. Some people are gonna drag. It's your job to make it feel as good as possible. That's when people are gonna call you because you always make the music feel right. Thanks for watching this week's video. Before I finish, I just wanna thank everybody who reached out. The response for the Bob Cranshaw video last week has been absolutely incredible. And I wanna thank everybody that's subscribed or viewed the channel as a result of that. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please don't hesitate to click the like button and please subscribe for more jazz bass centric content coming at you every single week as fast as I can do it. Until next time, take care of yourself and please love your neighbor. Oh, and uh, go Steelers.